Hello everybody, uh, welcome to Mod 1 Overview. So, um, purpose of this is really to just talk about where we should be at the end of next week. So, these are the standards for the program. So, this is from the site. This is the same thing. Uh, we started doing this uh, seven or eight mods ago. Um, because it sort of felt like we were learning a lot of disconnected uh, like tricks and concepts and it was hard to see how they glued together until the end. So uh, we came up with this talk to show you how all these different standards kind of puzzle piece together um, to form like the, the big skill that you're supposed to have at the end of the module. Um, what this is not is a lesson you are probably not going to be able to do anything after this that you aren't able to do right now. Um, so like internalize that for a sec, because uh, what can also happen with this is students start feeling a little panicked. They go, oh my God, that was so much and I couldn't keep up and I was trying to take notes and I was trying to follow along. We're going to like spend the next two weeks doing all of these things. So plenty of time to, uh, to dive deep on all of this. We wanted to give you the like uh, bird's eye view on what all of this stuff looks like together when you're done. Any questions about that before I get started? What's AR? Is it augmented reality? No, uh, like it is like in real life. Uh, in this case, it was active record. So this is my shorthand for these model Thank relationships you. using active record. Other questions? Hey, Kyle. Yep. Well, um, and some of this stuff will prepare us, of course, for our challenge. Is that right? Yep. I mean, because you're saying there's a lot and we won't be able to Correct. get a full grip on this, but we'll be able to get a full grip on what we're going to do for our code challenge, right? Yep. I'm more or less going to show you what the code challenge is. Oh, you're amazing. Cool. Anything else? What other questions before we get started? I'm just amped to get started. All right. Um, cool. So let's dive in. Let's say that I wanted to um, write a program that kept track of dogs and their owners. So I want to be able to like add people and add dogs and say, who owns this dog and um, what dogs does this person have? So I might say something like, a dog, actually I could do this a couple ways. I could say that if I have a dog and an owner, that each dog has one owner, but every owner can have more than one dog. That's one way we could say that. We could. Well, are we gonna? I don't mean to interrupt you, but are, are we gonna do kind of ERD diagrams here? Uh, yes. In fact, that's our standard modeling domains with ERDs. I think. Yep. Model domains using ERDs. Yep. My um, bad. All right, so we could say something like one owner has many dogs and each dog only has one owner. That's like a perfectly fair way to do this. We could also say that each dog can have more than one owner. So like maybe I have a dog named Bixby and I also have a dog named Mesa but um, they're my wife's dogs also, right? So we could say that Kyle's dogs are Bixby and Mesa. Elise's dogs are Bixby and Mesa. We could say that Bixby's owners are Elise and Kyle. Mesa's owners are Elise and Kyle. Making sense so far? So if we wanted to represent this with code, um, specifically, if we wanted to like uh, do something with Ruby on the command line that would uh, help us keep track of everybody's dogs, we'd 
probably do something like this. Um, so I'm going to call this dog zap. And this is an opportunity for us too to get used to the goofy ass way that I program. So here's how this works. The thing down at the bottom here, these are like uh, different tabs for your terminal. Um, so you can do those in VS Code, you can do them just on the command line also. So that's what those are. I've got one tab for, um, I'm gonna run the app on that, and I have another one that's gonna have my text editor. My text editor, I mentioned yesterday, it's called Vim. And it looks like War Games 1970s shit because it's War Games 1970s shit. Um, so uh, even though it like looks very old school, it's just like VS Code. It's got tabs at the top and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a file called environment.rb and I'm going to make a file called owner.rb and I'm going to make a file called dog.rb. So I have these three files in this folder. And then I'm going to open that environment RB and I'm going to bring in that dog file and that owner file. I'm also going to bring in pry. Then at the end of it, I'm going to binding.pry. So I have taken a couple files, Ruby files. Um, I've made them kind of like brought them all into one place and then I ran a pry. So. And what does pry do? So pry is our debugging tool. That's what's going to let us like kind of stop code in the middle and, gotcha. uh, and do stuff. So then in these two files, the dog file and the owner file, I'm going to make uh, these classes. And we're going to talk about classes a lot this week. But So I've got those two things. They're kind of like variables, except uh, we can do wild ass things with them. All right, with just this, there's quite a lot I can do. If I Ruby, environment rb hey dump me into pry and so if i did something like bixby equals dog dot new i get a dog back if i do kyle equals owner dot new i get a dog back cool so now let's see if we can't uh add some stuff to those dogs so we, dog, dog has a name. So when I make a new dog, it should take in a name and it should save that name. Funny thing, owner kind of works the same way. So if I copy that and put the same thing in owner, now they can take a name in. So what that would look like using it would be Bixby, equals dog.new Bixby. Cool. You do the same thing with owner. Neat. Now, if I want to be able to read those, then I'm going to have to add readers for them. This is going to make it so I can do something like Bixby.name and get the name back. Owner, Kyle.name, get my name back. So if I add those in here, and do uh, Kyle, Kyle's dog.new, nope. There we go. So if I do that, and do Bixby.name, yeah, uh-oh. Oh. Actually, I have to like do this correctly. That helps. 
That's what I get for not writing Ruby for like six weeks. All right, so if I do something like that, now I can do Bixby.name and get that string back. This is classes and objects. Um, there's all kinds of cool stuff we can do for that. We can even like make the classes, um, just put that on dog. We can put uh, other methods on here. We can say something like bark, uh, and we can say that this puts woof. My name is uh, something like that. And if I do that, All right, Bixby, what's your name? That's my name. Oh, Bixby, can you bark? Woof, my name is Bixby. So we're organizing. Um, it, it didn't the, print. What was that? It didn't print. Yeah, it did. Nil. It returned nil. It printed, woof, my name is Bixby. My bad, thank you. Um, and we'll talk all about the difference between those two things this week. Um, cool. So, um, uh, so this was organizing things with classes and objects. We have things that the dog is. We have things that the dog does. We have things that the owner is. Things that the owner does. So that's we talk about building stuff with classes and objects. That's a, that's the that's the bulk of it right there. Can I ask a question about that really fast? Please do. Um, can you go to the other screen that had? Um, so if you copied and pasted bark mm -hmm. and put it into owner, mm -hmm. would it then say woof my name is and then whatever the owner's name is? Yep, you got it. Okay. So yeah, if I want to make my owner bark, I say Kyle is. Owner dot new Kyle. Hey Kyle, can you bark? Totes. Okay. Thank you. Also, it doesn't need to be like the thing I'm saving that new owner in doesn't have to be named Kyle. Um, call it fart equals owner dot new um, uh, Mordecai. Still works. I had a question. Yeah. Uh, so the key, like the keyword self, is mm -hmm. that like a word that Ruby just understands that you can use interchangeably? It's not like something you have to set a variable to. You got That's it. What I was about to ask. Yeah, because I was like, hmm, why did you do that? All right, cool. So self is uh, self is some Ruby magic. Uh, and you'll find that there's a lot of languages that use something like that. Sometimes it's called self, sometimes it's called this. Um, but uh, we will hopefully have a, like a pretty good intuitive understanding of how that works by the end of the by the end of this week. Cool. Um, great awesome. question. So on, yep, one more up? question for you, Kyle. Uh-huh. So on that method bark. Yep. You Syntactically, you could put an open and close parentheses after bark without changing the functionality, correct? You are correct. So if you've ever done any like other programming outside of Ruby, you're probably used to something more like uh, like bark with parentheses right. like that. Likewise, you're probably more used to something like um, Elise equals owner dot new and then putting parentheses around that. Like that is completely valid in Ruby. You'll notice though that basically no Rubyists do that, um, but it is technically valid syntax. Is there any sort of performance hit or difference nope. to doing Identical. that? Okay. All right. Um, no, I was just curious. I know that's a little off topic. No, I just super good question. And um, in some ways, I think this makes Ruby like a tricky language to start with because I can write something like that. I could also write that exact same thing 
like that. And generally, having more than one way to do thing makes something harder to learn. Um, but uh, was my choice for one. And for two, uh, it, it ends up being, um, allows you to sort of uh, express yourself through your code a lot more directly. If we compare that to something like Python, Python, there's exactly one right way to do absolutely everything. Um, and so I think that makes it a little bit easier to learn the rules and everybody's code looks exactly the same, except everybody's code looks exactly the same. And sometimes that can disguise what you're trying to, what your intent with it is. Uh, cool. So if you were, uh, go, go ahead. Uh, just sorry, to, as long as we were there, yeah. um, back in Vim, if mm -hmm. you were to, um, after that initialize argument and you put a space and mm -hmm. another variable, would that be the rubiest way of passing in two constructed variables? Uh, not a space, you need to uh, do something like that. Okay. Yep. Uh, cool. Onward. And Go ahead. last one, sorry. Um, when you do an initialize function like that, I take initialize as a keyword that yep. builds the constructor. Um, does that make the constructor of that class dog required? Ooh, somebody is like, uh, has done a little bit of programming before. So yes, initialize is the constructor method in Ruby, um, but no, it doesn't have anything to do with require. If all of those words are new to you, that's completely fine. We're gonna talk about all of them. But yeah, initialize is the constructor uh, method. So I could technically construct a dog without passing a name and it wouldn't, it wouldn't yell at me. Uh, it would because Ruby is fussy about that kind of thing. Um, if I try to do this without a name, It'll say wrong number of arguments. Okay, cool. So it does make it. It does make it essentially a required. Correct. Fair. Okay. You got it. All right. So uh, we've modeled some stuff with classes and objects. Um, let's like do some stuff with them. So the goal was, I want to be able to keep track of um, dogs and owners and who owns dogs and all that kind of stuff. So. I might say, hey, owner, uh, can you add a dog? And then maybe we take a uh, dog and we need some way of keeping track of an owner's dogs. So uh, a sound way to do that would be, we say, all right, uh, whenever you make a new owner, uh, they get an array, an empty array that will hold all of their dogs. And then whenever I want to add a dog, I take those dogs and shovel them in. It's a little, little grim. All right, so uh, now I should be able to add a um, dog. I also want to be able to see my dogs when I'm done. So I do something like that. Let's see if it works. So I say, that and I say Kyle is a new owner and I say Bixby is a new dog and I say Mesa is a new dog and then I do Kyle dot add dog Bixby and I do Kyle dot add dog Mesa and now I should be able to get Kyle's dogs. Hey, I got my dogs. I'm keeping track of my dogs. It's pretty cool. So I've done some, I've established a relationship between owners and dogs. I can sort of keep track of everything. But here's where the problem comes in. I probably also want to keep track of my owners. So I keep track of owners here. I do something like def add owner, shovel in the owner, and that should add that to the array. I have a quick question. Hit me. Uh, for at the very top, mm -hmm. the APR underscore reader. Correct. Is that talking just specifically to the text? Editor, like what is that? So what that does 
I've made, I'm keeping track of these variables. The ones that start with ats are called instance variables. Okay. When I have a uh, when I have an instance of a class, I can't see the stuff inside of it. I can't see any of these variables. The only way I can see them is if I make a method that returns them like that. Now, the faster way to write that would be like that. And even better than that would be to use adder reader. They do the exact same thing. That's the, okay. I was wondering about that. All yep. right, cool. And then the uh, like semicolons before each one, does that just indicate that it's a class? Um, the colons? No, uh, the colons are symbols. That's a data type in Ruby. Okay, and cool. They're saying that I want to take the variable that's uh, the instance variable that's called name, and I want huh. you to make a method that's also called name, and I want it to just return that instance variable. That's what that says. Okay, cool. Uh, neat. So uh, I can keep track of a dog's owners here. I can keep track of an owner's dogs here. Can anybody tell me what the problem I'm going to run into is? You could have owners nested within dogs and dogs nested within owners. The relationship That's actually is not a problem. That works just fine. That's a great guess, though. You basically have to write the code twice. Yes. Uh, so now I need to keep track of these in two places. Because if I do something like... Um, let's make... Kyle again. All right, so I've got Kyle, and I've got Mesa, and I've got Bixby. Neat. So I can Kyle.addDog Bixby, and I can do Kyle.dogs and get Bixby. But when I do Bixby.owners, I don't get anything. Because I would need to do all right, every time we do this, I need to save that information in two places. Zoics! So, the solution to this is the hardest thing that we are going to do over the next two weeks. So, it looks like this. We're going to take this relationship dog and owner, and we're going to put another class in between them called dog owner. The purpose of dog owner is just keeping track of who owns what. That ends up being, and this is a big vocab word for us, our single source of truth. So all that class does is keep track of who owns what. And it looks something like this. So I'm going to make that uh, dog owner RB file. So now I have four files in this folder. Go over to the environment. Add the dog owner. Cool. And in that dog owner file, I'm going to make this class. And um, what's going to happen here is when this initializes, it's going to take in a dog and an owner. And, and it's going to uh, it's going to keep track of uh, particular instances of dog and owner. So we can say something like at dog equals dog at owner equals owner. And then we're also going to keep track of every single one of these that we make. And we do that with a thing called at at all. 
So those of you who've been reading ahead, these are instance variables. Add at all is a class variable. This is owned by dog owner, not a particular dog owner. And the way that we and use cross, it, go ahead. Cross functionally, that would be a static variable. That's exactly what it is. Yep. So if we do this now, uh, we're keeping track of every instance of a dog and an owner at the same time. So that would work something like this. If I say that, let's see, I'll make Bixby and Kyle, I could say something like, um, dog owner dot new and pass in Bixby and Kyle. And now it's going to keep track of that. And I can make a method in here called self dot all that is going to return all of those. So now if I can keep track, if I have like universal access to um, every instance of a dog ownership. Now I can use that inside of my owner class and my dog class to get what all the dogs owners are, what all the owners dogs are. So it's going to look like this. Now to add a dog, what we're really doing in this is creating a new instance of dog owner. So we do something like dog owner dot new, pass in the dog, and any guesses what that second argument's gonna be? Self. Self, very nice. So um, really, we do the same thing on the dog side. If I'm trying to add an owner, we just sort of flip those around. Self is the dog, owner is the other thing. Now, here's where this, like, so already this is mentally a little bit gnarly because, like, we got really abstract really quickly. But if I want to get all of my owners, now what I need to do is look that up on the dog owner class. So I'm going to say dog owner dot all. And here's where all that cool map and filter and reduce and all that kind of stuff that you uh, scratched out a little bit in the pre-work, um, this is where this all starts happening. So I go, okay, if I have every dog owner, then I only want the ones uh, where I'm the dog. So I filter that and I say something like, All right, well, what makes it into the filter? Probably ones where dog owner dot dog is me. So we'll call that like my ownerships. All right, now uh, if I have my ownerships, uh, the point of this is that I wanna get, um, I'm trying to get the owners out of this. So I could say my ownerships dot map so we'll call that my ownership and what I want out of this is my ownership dot owner. So I say like my owners and then return my owners. So in, in the add owner mm -hmm. and the function of owners, yep. we, we never added a require at the top for dog owner. Is that We don't be a need problem? to. That's what the purpose of this file was. This okay. file lets all of those different classes see each other. Gotcha. So if like right now you're like sweating bullets and you're like, ooh, I don't know many of these words, uh, like 
Certainly not comfortable enough with filter and map to do something like this. Good, you're not supposed to. This is where we need to be in two weeks. So, um, all right, let's see if it works. And since I'm tired of typing all this out every time, you can also preload variables in this environment file. So I could say something like Kyle equals owner.new Kyle, Elise equals owner.new Elise. Let's say Bixby is dog.new Bixby. Mesa is dog.new uh, Mesa. And uh, Elise used to have a dog uh, named Gonzo, so we'll put him in here also. And I used to have a dog named Kelsey. We'll put Kelsey in here. All right, so I should be able to do stuff like, um, let's see, where did I do all that logic? Did you do it in both of them? Yes, I did. I should be able to do something like Kyle.addDog. Um, Kelsey, I should be able to do something like Bixby.addOwner. Kyle, I should be able to do Bixby.addOwner. Elise, and if I run Bixby.owners, I should be able to see Kyle and Elise. If I do Kyle.dogs, I should be able to see all my things. Oops, I need to do the other side of that. The other side of this is the exact same code, just backwards. So dog.owner itself is my ownerships. And then my dogs should give me that. And then lastly, I need to be able to uh, actually see the dog and the owner. So. I say dog and owner. Let's see if it all works. Cool. Kyle, who are your dogs? <gasps> uh oh. Bixby, who are your owners? All right, cool. Bixby knows who his owners are. Kyle's just not super sure about who his dogs are. Uh, Kelsey, who are your owners? Cool. All right, so that side of it's working. Owner.dogs. Oop, because I have to write it correctly. All right, so if I do Kyle.dogs, there's my dogs. You're beautiful. Um, so that is how we would do something like representing a bunch of uh, do dogs being owned by a bunch of owners and keeping track of those relationships. And you can imagine a scenario where you're um, uh, essentially making an app. It only runs on the command line. All it does is like keep track of relationships between things that could be like my books, my favorite movies, uh, that sort of stuff. And spoiler alert, that's kind of what your first project is going to be. But what we just did we modeled domains, uh, we modeled relationships, we iterated over collections, and we even dem demonstrated some basic programming proficiency. We're not uh, keeping track of any of the stuff in the database. You don't need to do that for the code challenge. Uh, you do need to do it for the project, but we got time to talk about that. So keep in mind that all we were trying to do is get a big picture overview of how these different things we're gonna spend the next two weeks learning fit together. What questions do you have? Um, I was just wondering in regards to the um, text editor you were using, yep. when you were creating uh, the environment RB and the other like few files, uh -huh. there needs to be like a, a hierarchy in order for them to all be connected to each other? Um, not really. Um, Ruby and most languages like this are relatively loosey-goosey about like um, order on that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. So you can just create it and it just knows that, hey, this environment is going to apply to these other files. 
Yeah, so since, I don't know if you noticed, um, when I'm running the app, I run, uh -huh. I run the environment itself. That's what oh. makes all these things available. Oh, okay, okay, that makes more sense. All right, cool. Okay. <laughs> what else? When you did the uh, Kyle.add.kelsey, mm -hmm. can you just uh, add the other dogs in the same line? Um, not the way that I wrote it, but that's possible. So, like, if I um, let's say I want to make another one called Add Dogs. So I do something like that. Um, or I could splat it. You might have read about that, where like we can pass them all in comma separated and then um, turn them into an array. Let's say I'm giving it an array of dogs. I could do something like dogs dot each, and then do something like that. That'll work, I think. <laughs> let's let's try it. So. Um, yeah, I was thinking about what you said about splat. I hadn't read about it, but I was just thinking if you could chunk it in there. So if I'm adding Elise's dogs and it takes an array with uh, Gonzo and Mesa. Yeah, I think that works. Let's try. All right, didn't barf so far. Elise, who are your dogs? And there they are. Yeah, it didn't matter that some of them we did them from the owner side, some of them we did them from the dog side. Who gives a shit? Single source of truth. That's what's keeping track of who owns what. More questions. So in 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 the in a, a scenario where you have a single source of truth, mm -hmm. would you generally recommend making that so like either a class variable or a static variable? Yep. Like in real life, Active Record's gonna take care of a lot of this stuff for us, but uh, doing this stuff by hand will give us a much better sense of uh, how classes relate to each other. Gotcha, thank you. What else? Uh, you mentioned that uh, one could read ahead, and uh, where is like oh. the list of stuff? Yeah, so um, we have to uh, deploy all your curriculum, I found out last night. So uh, if you haven't been able to get to the new stuff, you're not alone. Um, well, uh, we'll get that queued up during lunch. It, it takes a little bit, but um, you'll have uh, you'll have access. We, by the way, I, I released the entire curriculum at the same time, like for the program. So if you want to look at React Labs this afternoon, you'll be able to. Some of the other Flatiron campuses will like meter those out like one at a time, but uh, I'm not in the business of telling people to not learn things. So um, I'm giving you the uh, the entire uh, smorgasbord uh, right off the bat. I have a quick question. Yep. Um, also noob question. Um, how do I, in the terminal, create a new Ruby file Ah, great question. Anybody know the answer? Touch. Touch. So uh, touch is one of several command line utilities that um, has kind of an interesting side effect on top of what it does. The reason it's called touch is if we look at these files, um, you can see the, these little like timestamps of the last time that they were updated. 1141, 1138, 1145. So that dog one, I haven't touched that in 10 minutes. So if I say touch dog.rb, now it's been touched. Uh, so it was most recently updated at 1148. A cool side effect of that is if the file doesn't exist, it also creates it. Um, so if I do touch something new, now I have that something new file. 
So that is the way to just create blank files in the command line. And then if I want to get rid of that one, what do I do? Who knows? RM. RM. Ooh, you have yours confirms. It does. So, uh, and the way that you do that is um, so I make a file, I want to get rid of it. Um, you've probably figured out that copying stuff, uh, renaming stuff, like you don't get prompted for anything. If you'd like to do that, you can say rm i. And that's what makes this prompt. And you can even configure your terminal so that every time you do rm, you're actually doing rm i, which is what I did. Right. Nice. What else? Is there a list of what subjects we're going to be going over day by day in case we do want to read ahead and uh, try to get ahead in prep? Uh, great question. So it doesn't really work with the model that we use here. And the reason for that is that um, what we do day by day is, uh, for one, different every single time, and for two, personalized. So there are some of you that are probably going to be ready to like start scratching at classes and objects tomorrow, maybe the day after. There's some of you that are going to be like, really need a lot more reps on things like uh, enumerables and iteration. So we do both of those at the same time. There's no class pace. Uh, this is a personalized program. So some of you are, um, are going to do some parts faster than others and some parts slower than others. And what I've found in uh, almost 20 years of teaching is that there really isn't such a thing as like fast students and slow students. It's highly contextual. And if you can get an intervention for somebody at the right time, uh, when I can find out that you're struggling with enumerables now and uh, do the intervention now, you tend to not like stay behind really. And a lot of times, I think the biggest curse, especially in a code school, is if you come in with some background knowledge, um, and because a lot of the stuff in mod one, probably not gonna be that difficult for you. But um, if you're like crapping your pants right now, you're like, oh, how am I gonna learn all these things? Uh, one of the things you're learning over the next couple weeks is how to hustle hard in this program. And by the start of mod two or so, we're gonna be getting into stuff that nobody knows. Um, and like that hustle will serve you well. So um, if you are in the position where like, oh, classes, objects, constructors, uh, polymorphism, like I got that kind of stuff, then uh, reach out to me or one of the coaches or, or Damon and like, let's figure out a way to like make you sweat a little bit this mod also, because that'll be good for you. Um, but day by day, like what are we doing tomorrow? We who knows what we're going to be doing? What you are going to be doing tomorrow is based on what happened today. Um, but I can say, as far as like pacing goes, I would hope that by the end of the week, we're pretty solid on these three. The other stuff, uh, especially like the relationships. If that doesn't happen until next week, I, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Um, these first three standards, that's a good use of like here Friday. Um, we open up the code challenge on Tuesday. There's a like near 100% chance that you're not going to have the relationships solid enough to like pass on Tuesday. That's fine. We're going to spend probably most of next week on modeling relationships and modeling domains. The database stuff, sometimes we don't get to that till project week. Uh, if we get like some people who are like just raring to go on that, sometimes we do it towards the end of next week. But uh, the data persistence stuff and active record, that, that about half the time happens in the third week. Good question. What else? 
<laughs> cool. So, uh, any other questions come up, drop me a line. Uh, elsewise, this is where we're looking to be by like Friday next week. Um, and uh, I'd recommend, not too many people take me up on this, but I'd recommend it. Maybe like once or twice before the end of next week, go back over this video or go back over any of the Mod 1 videos. Um, and uh, as you get more comfortable with classes and objects and iterators and like that sort of stuff, um, looking back over how this fits into the big picture will serve you well. Um, elsewise, have a good lunch. I think you guys have a thing at one o'clock with uh, Kat. Um, I'll work on getting your curriculum out and awesome, on Swerte.